kind of want to break down the strategy for when you're factoring these things, okay? So there's only three different kinds of things that you'll get. You'll either get um, expressions that have two terms, you'll get expressions that have three terms, you'll get expressions that have four terms. You usually won't see anything outside of this, okay? So you're either going to have two, a plus b, right? Or three terms, a plus b plus c, or four terms, okay? And no matter which one of these cases you have, the first thing you should be doing is factoring out a greatest common factor. That's always going to be your first step, okay? You just pull out whatever they all have in common and then see what you have from there, okay? After that, there's different situations that for each one. If you have two terms, then you're probably going to need to use a special formula, which you're not going to get today, okay? That's going to be module 14, which is not on our plate for today. Today, we need to catch up with module 12 and module 13, okay? But in module 14, we'll address these special formulas, okay? Four terms is usually the first one that they show you besides uh, factoring out the GCF because when you have four terms, that's when you need to start talking about grouping, right? So if you've got four, immediately you do the GCF, then you do grouping. If you got two, you do the GCF, and then you use a special formula that we'll learn later, okay? If you've got three terms, again, you always do the GCF, but then after that, you can do the AC method. This is the one that I show students because I've mentioned before. Bless you. Thank you. I've mentioned before, I don't like doing this method here, that method there, just one thing for three terms, and it works all the time, okay? However, you can cheat when you're doing the AC method because there is a difference between having something like this versus having a number in front like this. Okay? Yeah, because that one last term is the AX plus the BY equals C. Right? This one's longer. Yeah. Okay? This one is short. Once you find the two magic numbers that you're going to be looking for, you just already have the answer. But when you have a number in front, once you get the two magic numbers, you're not done. Okay. Uh, so you don't want us to use that AX formula plus BY and C plus C and all that form like the second one that you have. That's one of the formulas. This here? Yeah, but it's not squared. It's the AX plus BY plus C, right? That's a formula. Right, but that's for um, lines. Okay. That's if for lines. as soon as you have a square, it's okay, not it's not a line anymore. A okay, okay. It should be a parabola. Okay. But we'll need to know how to factor these things because the whole okay. section is going to be on factoring, okay. right? And then the idea is, is you want to figure out what is going to multiply to give you A times C, but add to give you B. Now notice if I had a, the type of problem at the top, the A is like an immutable one, right? So you said, say those lines again. So you said. The, what times what is going to give you A times C? But those same things will add to give you B. And these are those magic numbers that I'm talking about. This should be the same number, and these guys should be the same number. Oh, okay? you're talking about like if you... And Alex put a chart, and they use M and N. Yeah, and all yeah. of that. But mm -hmm. you're basically saying, he showed me a quick way too yesterday. Like you multiply, like say you have that first number in front of X, say it's 4, and you can multiply that by C, and say it's 9, and it comes yes. out to 36. Then you got to figure out yeah, that. Yeah. Then you got to figure out mm -hmm. that both of those numbers together got to right. add up to B. And the only thing different with the top one is that when you multiply 1 times C, it's not really going to change it. It's still C. It's still C. Okay. Right. So that's why that top one's a little bit shorter. Okay. But right. essentially, it's the same exact method right. for right. both. Right. 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 Okay. Right. So we'll talk about that. I don't think we have three terms just yet. But let's start from the very beginning. I noticed that everyone had done the greatest common factor. Um, of two univariate mod, uh, monomials, but not everyone had done with the three univariate module, mon, uh, monomials. So we've got this term here, this term here, and that term there, and they just want us to take out the greatest common factor. Um, you can look at it as two ways, because you actually have with you 
um, some cheat sheets because I think in that stack of papers that I gave you, you, you had one that had that. prime numbers, exactly. And so use that and give me the numbers for 45. What are the prime factorizations for 45? I believe it's three times three times not, um, five. But verify that for me. You want to look, you say for 45? For 45. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, just be patient. <laughs> That's what I tell my three-year-old, so now he tells me all the time. Be patient. Be three times three times five. Yes. Okay, great. And then what about 75? Is that three 75. times five times five? Yes. It's, no, it's, yes, ma'am. It's three times five times five. For and then 32 times three times five? 30 is two times three times five. Okay, great. So then what we're going to do is we're just basically going to circle all the ones that they have in common, right? So we notice that all of them have this three in common. There goes another pin. All of them have this three in common, and all of them have a five in common, right? And you have to be able to circle one number for all three rows, okay? So notice I circled all these threes and then all these fives, but they all have a different factor as well, right? So what I'm going to do, if I want to figure out what the GCF is for the number, you basically just take all these little looped numbers and multiply them together. So they had a 3 in common, and they had a 5 in common, which means they have a 15 in common. And that's the greatest that they have, because I've already circled all the ones that they have in common, right? 3 by itself is a common factor, mm -hmm. and 5 by itself right. is a common factor. But if you want the greatest, you have to multiply them together, okay? So that's all I did here was take both of those and just multiply them together, and now I have the greatest common factor. Now, that's just the number part. Each one of these also has letters. Bless you. So you have to think, well, how many letters can I take from every single one of those? Why, 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 right, you have to go with the lower one, right? Yeah. You can't go with the higher one, even though it says the word greatest, because this one doesn't have five in common with it, right? So you have to go with the lower one, Q. What happens if somebody was missing a Y? Can you take any Ys out? No. 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 Okay. So that's all I needed to know was just what is the common factor, and we figured out that the number part was 15, and we figured out that the variable part, part was y cubed, right? So that's all we were doing for that particular problem. Now looking at this, you've got these numbers again, and if you can look at them and know what the greatest thing is, then fantastic, but if you can't, you always have that sheet of primes to help you. So for 30, I already have it up there. It's two times three times five. For 42, it's two times three times seven. And I only know that because 6 times 7, right? And 6 is 2 times 3. And then 18 is going to be 2 times 3 times 3. So what do they have in common? 2 or 3. They have 2 and 3 in common. And if you multiply those together, yes, it is 6. So the GCF for the number part is 6. Then now what is the variable part? Correct. Go with the lower one. So u squared. And you got it. Okay, so not so bad, right? Eventually we'll do stuff with the GCF, but for right now we're just identifying it. So what about this one? The greatest common factors of multivariate monomials. So not only do you have to consider the numbers, you also have to consider every single letter that's there. So looking at the numbers, these numbers are pretty similar to the last example. I would say six. It is six for the number. Then now I see a Y here. So, and there's a Y there. So, they have Y's in common, but a mini. One. Just the one. Yep. Go with the lower number, the lower exponent. This one has W's and this one has W's. So, can I put W's here? W to the third power. Correct. The, third the lower three. one. Yeah, the this one has X's. This one doesn't. Can I put X's no. here? No. No. They have to have it in Both of common, them. right? In order for it right. So, this is the whole common factor. What about the next one? What would be the number? The biggest number that goes evenly into both of those? 28, 7, 4. 4 goes into there. Yep. And 4, four goes, goes into there. there. That's the biggest one. Yep. Okay, so GCF is 4. Y, y to the 5th. Uh-huh. W squared. 
and w squared. And there's no other extra guys, so we're good there. Okay. Now it wants me to factor it out. So notice instead of commas between everything, now they have pluses and minuses in between. Okay. So I have to do two things. I have to one, figure out what the GCF is, and then I have to actually factor it out. Now make sure you remember or think of what the word factoring means. Okay. When you multiply two numbers together, this number is their product. So if I multiply these two numbers together the answer is called the product okay but the two individual numbers that I multiplied together these guys are called the factors and so what you want to do is you have been given the product you know what the final answer looks like you want to know what did it look like before it was multiplied okay and when you have two terms, the only way you can multiply two terms by something is if you do the distributive property, right? So essentially, you want to take out what they have in common and then figure out what would have had to have been inside the parentheses in order for you to get these two results, oh, yeah, that's okay? So it's basically like the undoing, the undoing of distributing, yeah, yeah. okay? Um, so what I'm going to do here is first find out what the GCF is and I'm going to put it on the outside because that's where the GCF goes, on the outside, okay? Now let's see, if I look at 24 and 6, what do they have in common? The greatest thing they have in common? 6. 6 is correct. Yep. What about the letters? Uh, be 6U. Mm-hmm. To what power? Uh, the 4th power. Yep. Any W's? W to the 3rd power. Any Y's? Yeah, but we ain't got them on both sides. So do I have any in my GCF no. then? No. no. So I'm going to open my parentheses here, and then my job, I'm putting a plus because that's a plus, okay? My job is to figure out what would go inside here so that when I distribute this, I get these two numbers, these two terms, okay? The easiest way I do it is if I already know what I'm going to be factoring out, I just go ahead and divide by that for each term. And then that helps me figure out what's going to end up going here. Mm -hmm. So what's 24 divided by 6? 4. 4. What happens with the U4 they up top and U4 out. down there? Exactly. Out. What happens with the U3 and the U3, or out. sorry, W3 and W3? They cancel, they cancel out. And then I'm still just left with the so Y five. to the 5. Over here, what is 6 divided by 6? 1. And we normally don't write it, so I'm just going to put like a little invisible one, right? Yeah. But it's there, though, because it's I there. had one yesterday where he helped me. Uh -huh. But it's on the outside of parentheses. It didn't have nothing. Mm -hmm. And he was like, it, uh, so it's invisible? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. invisible one. Okay. Gotcha. They're invisible. Yes, ma'am. What happens here with the U8 and the U4? They uh, cancel. This one cancels, yeah. but then how many do I have still left? Two. Not two. Four, 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 I'm sorry. four left. Yeah, right, right. So this would be U to the, to the four. fourth. And then here, three can cancel, but how many would I have Five. left? Five. Yeah. So then this is W to the fifth. And what's cool about factoring is that you can always check your answers. All you have to do is multiply it out and see if you get the original, what they gave you. Okay? And then you bring what? You got to remember to bring that last one down, though, inside. Mm -hmm. not, gonna, yeah. Right, it's going to come out wrong. And then you just check it. Is this times this equal to what they gave me for the first term? And then is this GCF times this second term equal to that second term? If you wanted to check it. And you can type in the one in Alex or you can choose not to. That's up to you. The only time you're forced to type in the one is if that's all that was left, okay? Because if these U's had canceled and these W's had canceled and the sixes reduced, right? Yeah. It doesn't mean you have nothing left. It means you got one of them. It means you have one. One. And right. so one times one times one, one is times one. one. You right. have to write the one down. Okay. That'll come up, it'll surface in a little bit later. Because I do have a problem where that will happen. Now here, what does this one have in common between 30 and nine? Three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, what about the letters? C to the third. Be careful. 
How many V's oh, can no, I take oh, out? No, none of oh, one V to the fourth This one power. only has yeah, one. Yes, ma'am. Good. Okay. What about the X's? To the fourth power. What about the Y's? No, you can't bring it down. Right. right now. This doesn't have any in common. So then if I divide each term by this GCF, what number would I end up with here? Uh, v to the second. V to the second. X to the fourth. X to the fourth. And what number? Ten. You got it. Now I'm going to bring my minus. Three. Three. Uh, v to the... Uh, V's cancel out. V's cancel. X cancel out. X's cancel. Y to the ninth power comes on Y back. to the ninth. And that's it. You got it. Okay. Yep. And if you were to distribute this, yeah, you'll end up with the original. Okay. So now the next topic is factoring out a binomial from a polynomial. And then this is GCF factoring. So they also want you to notice that you could have weird looking factors. Isn't y minus two, that thing as a whole, still a factor of the first term? Isn't this being multiplied by something else, multiplied by something else, yeah. right? So this guy in the parentheses is still considered a factor. And this term over here has two factors as well, the number two, and then this guy again, y minus two. So remember, when you're trying to find the greatest common factor, that whole thing in parentheses, y minus two, is considered a factor because it's multiplied. And since they both have it, you could factor it out, right? <coughs> so if you leave the factor just as it was, and then remember, I always open my parentheses, right? What happens if I divide both of these guys by y minus 2 and y minus 2? You're going to have 7y squared minus 2? Exactly, because the y minus 2 junction cancels here and cancels there, doesn't it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that's exactly the way it looks. Now, we haven't learned how to factor binomials yet, and this one you can't, but just leave it be for now. Leave what be? This part. Because eventually, if you see a square, you probably are going to have to factor that more later. So what would you do with that? Would the 7 go on the outside then, and then? No, because this doesn't have a 7 factor. Okay. So you can't do anything here. Yeah, okay. But eventually, you will have stuff where you can keep going. Will that second half have to have something in it for you to factor this it out? one? Yeah. It will have maybe if this was a 14. Oh, yeah, that number will have to be different. Yeah. It doesn't have a y. Right, outside. right. It doesn't it have a greatest common square. factor. Right. And we haven't learned our special formulas yet for okay, two terms. Tempo, tempo, okay. Tempo. So right now, they won't be applicable. But when you get to module, what is it, 14? They, these things will be, you'll be able to keep going. Okay. okay? And you'll know whether to like keep going till the very end because the directions start saying factor completely. So they don't tell you how far you're gonna have to go. You have to know how far you can go, okay? So it gets a little bit weird later. That's tomorrow, <laughs> not yet. Okay, in the next example, what do these guys have in common? X, what, X minus five? Mm-hmm, and if I take that out. You're gonna have three X? I am gonna have three X. And what else? One. Correct. Minus one. And I have to put the minus one because if you say these cancel and then you write nothing, you, all you're going to do is multiply this times this, which is only going to give you that first term, right? You'll never get the second term. So you have to put something for the second term in order to get two terms at the end, okay? So yes, you're right. It is a minus one, this little guy right there. You have to be careful. This needs to multiply out to give you the original. And that's right there. You just do the full method, right? That first out yeah. and all that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now this one says factor by grouping. So they've got one, two, three, four terms. And that was what I was told in my little chart is to do the grouping. The first thing you should always do, though, is to see if there's a greatest common factor. Now, this guy doesn't have a number in front, right? And this guy doesn't have any letters in behind it. So automatically we know there's no greatest common factor. No numbers, no letters, I can't take anything from everybody, okay? So the grouping 
idea is you want to cut the problem in half and basically have two little baby problems like the stuff we've already been doing. But do I cut it in front of the plus sign or behind the minus sign? In, the plus sign. In front of, like to your left. This side? Yeah. Yes. And why? Because uh, it's got to be part of the second equation. This plus yeah. belongs to yeah, that, seven. that seven. So you yeah. can't chop it there because right. it belongs to him. Right. Good. That's like if it was a minus, it would be a negative. Seven. Right, exactly. And so then we're going to see what these guys have in common. What do they have in common? Y squared. y squared. And if you have to, you could put the Y squareds under here and see how they reduce. But what should I end up with? Y minus 6 on the inside. Mm-hmm. Now, whatever this symbol is, whatever it is, it has to come has to down. down. Always. That middle thing is always going to come down. Then what do these two guys have in common? Nothing. I they mean, do. They got seven in common. Seven in common. Just no letters, yeah, right? I mean, they got seven in common. Yeah. Now, notice that it's a positive seven. So if you go over here and you take this guy and divide it by a positive seven, and you take this guy and divide it by a positive seven... What are you going to end up with here? You're going to get y minus 6. Positive y, but negative 6. So you got it. Basically, what's in your first one going to be what your second one going to be. Those Normally, two, yes. But sometimes they don't. And then that's when you use the fancy word prime. Okay? Because eventually that will happen. Probably not today, but eventually. When you get to module 14. Weird things happen in module 14. They, like, throw it all at you. <laughs> You can if, if, yeah. I normally move my terms around before I start trying to move my factors around. Okay. Okay, so then these two, now it's like that previous problem where they have a binomial in common, right? They have this y minus 6 thing in common. So if I take the y minus 6 thing out, remember, it would cancel here and cancel there. So what would I have left inside? Y squared plus 7. Correct. <laughs> And this is the final response there. Now this example is the same thing. I want to first see if there's a GCF, but I see there's no letters behind the eight. And I see there's a three in the front here. Well, can they all be divided by three evenly? Four can be divided by three. Right. And neither can eight. Yeah, eight so can. then I can't take out the common number and I can't take out a common letter. So we don't have a GCF at the very beginning. Yep. I know in Alex they don't even talk about it because none of these are going to have it. But I want to start conditioning you for that being your first step. Because when you see this stuff tomorrow, they are going to be some of them where you can like do that. If you got, I'll like say how you have a four term right there. Mm -hmm. So I think I looked over one. Or when I went to Kyle's Academy, I did that just kind of looking. Uh -huh. Is that what you're going to take and say you had the three, but say that four W was, let me see, three, like, say it was 12, uh -huh. and then say that was Nine. 24 or something uh -huh. right there. So yeah. then is, would you take that the three, three out from everybody before you, before you start grouping? Right, so it'll be mm -hmm. to the side, then you have all yes. the rest of that. Okay, so that's what Exactly. Okay. That's so the that's, end. and it will happen tomorrow, yeah. Tempo, just not yet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But I want us to start thinking about that now, so that way when we get those other ones, we already know the first thing is to look for that, okay? okay? So here I couldn't take a three from everybody, I couldn't take a W from everybody, so we're just gonna group. So split that in half. What do these guys have in common? W squared. Yep, and when I take it out, what do I have left? Three W uh -huh. plus four. Plus four. Remember to bring this yeah, guy down. Nine. What do these two guys have in common? No letters, Nothing. but what number? Uh, two, in two in common. Two in common. So when you take the two out, or when you divide That's by two, three plus four. Three W, three w plus, four. plus four. And they match, right? So you bring out the matching term, or the matching factor, and then what do you have left? Uh, you have three W plus four. Mm -hmm. uh, w squared. W squared. Plus two. Plus two. Good. So these would cancel, right? And then we just have those two terms. Okay. 
okay, now, is it? Yeah, we'll make a difference. Now, like, say when you're bringing your outside terms down, the W, the W squared and the two, if you put them in the parentheses, parentheses when you bring it down and you flip them, that's mm -hmm. going to make your equation wrong too, right? It depends on the signs. If there's yeah. pluses, then it's fine. It's okay, but, but if, if there's minuses, minuses it, it, will, will. it will. Because you basically changed the signs of them. Okay. 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 So when you go through breaking it down and figuring it out. Make sure you keep the correct signs. Copy that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's more factoring by grouping. This one's problem type two only because the other one always had pluses in the middle and now we have minuses in the middle. So that's the only thing that makes this topic a little bit different from the previous topic. So we do the same thing though. This doesn't have any numbers in front and the back guy doesn't have any letters in, in the back. So there's no GCF. So I'm gonna immediately cut down the middle. And now that it's cut, what does the first half have in common? Y squared. Y squared. And then if I took the Y squared out. It would be Y in parentheses. It would be Y minus 3 in parentheses. Correct. And then remember, this sign has to come down. Yeah. So then what do these two guys have in common? Got 7 in common. 7. Now notice when I open parentheses, what's in the front here? A negative. Correct. So when I'm dividing here, I have to actually divide by a negative 7 because that's what's on the outside and what's a negative divided by a negative positive. a positive so you get a positive y and what's a positive divided by a negative, get a, negative three. a negative 3 so make sure you include that sign when you're doing the division okay now do my parentheses things match Yep, y minus 3. Yep, so we take that common thing out, and what are we left with? y squared minus 7. Yep, and now it's done. Yeah. Try that one. Okay, try it. Mm -hmm, try it. I'm going to take it off the camera and do it, and then we'll compare at the end. Yeah, what's the answer? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it because, uh, you know, I, 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 ain't, I ain't scared. Sure. X plus 1 in parentheses and that's next set of parentheses should be 5X squared minus 1. Correct. If they were X's, but they're yeah. V's. I mean, Z. I was like, I'm No. Man, five, you're geek. good. You're good. Right. Yes. So this is where that situation you were talking about comes in, right? These two guys, I had to bring down the minus sign. But V and 1 didn't have anything in common, did they? Mm -hmm. But I have to factor something out when you're doing grouping. So if they have nothing in common, you have to use a 1. And then if I divided each one by a negative, negative one, one you get the positive the and the positive. Yep, yep. And that same thing happened where everything canceled too, right? Mm -hmm. But we have to write the 1. If we don't write that, you only have one term. Yep, that's it. You wouldn't get the two terms like you have up here, right? So you have to put something inside that parentheses. But good, very good. You got all the whammies in that one and you got it right, good. <laughs> Except for the wrong letter. The wrong letter, yeah. <laughs> A lot of times I'll do that is I'll change the letters to X's yeah, and then at the end, I go back and I'm like, oh, they're V's and okay. I change them to V's. <laughs> but my brain works with X's better 
Okay, so this one's the same thing. It's just now they have different letters. Okay, but not a big deal. We just do it exactly the way we were doing it before. So this doesn't have any letters at all, and this doesn't have any numbers at all. So you can't possibly take out a GCF from the beginning. So we're just going to cut straight to the grouping. What does this half have in common? This has got a U in common. Sure. So when I take the U out, what do I end up with? X minus 6. And then this symbol has to come, has down. To come down. And what do these guys have in common? Uh, 1. Mm -hmm. yep. If it's nothing, then you have to put a 1. Good. And so then that's a positive 1. Yep. So if I divide these guys by positive 1, they're going to stay exactly yep. the same, aren't X, they? X plus 6. Positive X, positive 6. Oops, I think I made a mistake here. Hold on, I think so too, because it don't, because the thing on the inside ain't the, ain't the same. I think we'll change this one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Why? Why are you It doesn't matter, because I chose to change, because I want to keep that positive, so I'm going to change this one. I think I just wrote down the problem wrong. And the only reason I'm changing that one is because I want this parentheses to match that, that one, one right? That's what I was going to ask you. Okay, so yes. you want them to be the same. That's why you're changing it. Okay. Uh-huh. Because they do not do that to you yet, where it's prime. Yes, yeah, they, right they don't do that. They don't do that yet. Not and yet. And normally, it doesn't really happen on a grouping problem. When that happens, where they don't match, is when you're trying to do the AC method. If you do the AC method and it's just not working out, that's usually when you say, "Oh, this thing's prime." But we haven't even gotten to the AC method yet. So now they both match, and I can factor out the matching factor. And then what would I have left over if I took out the matching factor? Uh, you got B minus 6, and then uh, U plus 1. U plus 1. Good. Okay. This one has got the correct signs. So if I, let's see. Do they have a number all in common among is that all a four? four? In the front? This is a 9. Oh, that's a 9. Yeah. yeah. This 9 is like my 9. Like they talking to somebody. <laughs> So we've got a 9, a 15, a 3, and a 5. Can I divide all of them by a number? No. 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 We would think 3, but this yeah, guy but throws it off. Five. Five. What about the Y's? Do all of them have a Y? No, the 3 doesn't. Do all of them have a W? No. No. So we can't take any common factor out from the beginning. So we jump straight to the grouping. Jump straight to the grouping. What does the left side have in common? The Y's. So definitely a Y. Any y. numbers? Uh, three, oh, yeah. three as well. Mm -hmm. So then when I divide by 3Y here and 3Y there, what do you end up with? I see the Y's cancel. Three in there. Three minus three minus five w. Five w. Yep. Bring down your plus sign. What do these guys have in common? <laughs> No, don't shut up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I always tell people, I know the class is good when at the end of the semester and I ask questions, everyone is answering all the same thing. That's when you're like, okay, yay, we're good. <laughs> I mean, that, what everything got in common down there? Yes, yeah, this side. What do they all have in common? One again. Yep, you got That's it. it. So enough. positive one under here, positive one under there, nothing changes, right? Positive three, three minus five, five W. w. So do they have a common factor? Yep. 3 minus 5W. So you put your common factor in front. What do you have left? 3Y plus 1. 3Y plus 1. Good. And again, you could FOIL that all out, right? And mm -hmm. see if you get all these terms. They may not be in the same order, but as long as they're the same numbers with the same variables with the same sign. Okay. Let's just do it just so you can see. Yeah, but see. I was about to say it still has to add up to equal that number. Correct. That so if I do this times this, I get 9Y. Yeah, this times this is positive 3. Yeah. This times this is negative 15. Mm -hmm. And this times this, negative 5w. Yeah. And are they the same? 9y is the same, right? Yeah. Do I have a negative 15yw? Yes, sure They're, They're backwards, but yeah. it does not matter. Sign is still the same. It's yeah. there. Do I have a positive 3? Yes, right it's in the wrong order, but it, like in the terms of the order, but it's okay. And minus 5w. So as long as they're all there, it doesn't matter what order the terms are in. It doesn't even matter if your factors are in the same order, as long as they're all there. Okay? That won't mark you wrong in Alex or anything? No. Will you mark that wrong in the exam? No. Okay. And I don't ask you to check, and neither does Alex. Okay. All they want you to do is give them the answer, 
and that's it. This is for you to know if you got oh, the right answer. Double check our work. Right, which is helpful on a test, right? Yes, yep. So you'll know if you need to keep working on that if it's not coming out right. Okay, so here's more, same thing. This one's problem type two. Okay, this is the one where we have to um, reorder them. Now I'll do it once the way it is, and then you'll see why we can why we have to reorder it. If I were to chop this in the middle, these two guys have what in common? Five and X. A five and an X. And for you know the sake, they both have negative, right? Yeah. They so have take a out a negative. Yeah, you can take that. So then negative divided by negative will be positive. positive I'll get a seven. Right. Negative divided by negative will be positive one, yeah. and then an X. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Bring this guy down. What do these guys have in common? W. A W. Oops, I forgot to bring the plus down. And then it'd be X plus, seven. X plus seven. Now, are those the same? No, they're changed around. You got seven plus X and X plus seven. But this is equivalent to this guy. You could put positive X in front and a positive seven in the back, and it's still equivalent. Oh, to that that first, to is that still move, equivalent yeah, to yeah, that, yes. To negative 5x squared, yes, minus 35x, mm -hmm. that's correct. And that's so correct. they do still have a common yes. factor. Okay. x plus 7, and then you're going to have what? Negative, negative 5x. Five five x plus w. Plus w. Okay, 2, 4. Mm -hmm. right, makes sense. So you just flopped it around. Mm -hmm. okay. Just because we need to rewrite it so that they're in the same order as the other one. And it, would, it wouldn't have mattered. I could have swapped these guys around, right, to be 7 plus x. Mm -hmm. So that 7 plus x would match this 7 plus x. And it wouldn't make a difference if 7 plus x was here. Because it's all now, equivalent. If you change the first one, you don't have to change any signs or anything. Correct. Because it's all going to be the same. They're, they're all, all plus. They're all mm -hmm. pluses. Be that. Mm -hmm. This one I don't think is going to be the same, but we'll see. So if I cut this one in half, what does the first half have in common? Nothing. Yeah. No X's and U's in common. They don't. So if I were to take out a 1, I would still have 5U five five U minus 2X two two squared. squared. Right. Yeah. Then if I brought this down, that would be a negative. I mean, what do those guys have in common? Uh, X in common. X. And so yeah. then if I divided them by negative 1X, negative 1X, I would have positive U, yeah. negative, negative. 10. Right. But do they match? No. No, they don't. No. So that is not the correct way to group okay, it then. Yeah, I'm just rewriting it so that we can discuss how to rearrange it. Because I'm pretty sure, and you don't want to give up too soon, right? Because what if it can be factored? You don't want to give up too soon without having trying something else. Now, what you want to do is you want to reorder the terms so that you do have common things on this side and common things on that side, and hopefully the two things match, right? Yes, so what would you suggest we do then with the terms? If we want to reorder them so that the first part has something in common and the second part has something in common. Now, what do you mean the first part? Are we still breaking it? Like if you cut it in but I don't want to cut it in half yet because I haven't rearranged them yet. But you have to start visually seeing it, okay? So let me just talk out what I'm seeing and then maybe that'll help. Like I noticed that these two guys both they have the U, U and, common, right. and these two guys both have an X, X right? Common, yeah. So that's one way I could group them so that each group would have something in common. Okay. But that would require me to rewrite this as 5U and then this term comes next minus x u and then this term would be next minus two, two and then that guy stays 10. the same okay. so rewrite mm -hmm. rewrite the equation be careful with your vocabulary this is not an equation right there's no equal sign uh, what do you want to say? it's That's an expression, expression. there you okay. go rewrite expression. there you go And so now let's try to chop it in half this time. Okay, you got u in common. U, which so gives me. In parentheses, you're gonna have five minus two x squared. No. Oh, I mean, oh, my, oh you, I'm looking at the top one. So mm -hmm. you're gonna have. Let's cross that one out. Yeah, yeah. So you got five minus uh, x. 
You got it. Yeah. Bring this guy down. That's gonna be a yeah. And what are these guys? Uh huh. But there's more actually. Two x. Two x. Good. And it's a negative, right? Yep. So negative two x and negative two x. So what do we end up with? X minus five. Now this one's weird because notice that they're different. Okay. Right? Yep. So if we want, I like X's in front. So I'm gonna try to make this one look like that one. Okay. Okay. Now if I do that, this is gonna become negative X in the front and a positive five in the back, right? To keep yep. these equivalent. Keep those equivalent, yeah. Okay. But whenever you have a number in the front that's negative, and we'll talk about that some more in a little bit, you usually are forced to factor that negative out. So yes, I do have u here. But if I take this factor here and I factor it some more, I have to factor a negative 1 out. And if I do that, this guy would become a positive x, and then this guy would become a negative 5. In the end, yes. Because these are factors, right? Which means they're all multiplied together. So go ahead and multiply these two guys together. And yes, you get negative u. Mm -hmm. And I put it in parentheses because these are factors, which means it should all be multiplied together. If I don't put those parentheses around negative 1, it won't look like it's multiplied. Okay? So if you do factor out that negative 1, make sure you put it in parentheses. You don't want it to look like u minus 1, right? You want it to look like u times a minus 1 times x plus 5, or minus 5. And then now let's go ahead and take out what they have in common. And you end up with the negative u in the front and the negative 2x in the back. Okay. Now this is okay, Alex will take this. But like I said, if you ever have a negative in the front, they usually don't like it there in the front. They like you to factor it out. So Alex would also take this. If I factor out the negative 1 there, I would get a positive u and a positive 2x. And then I could put the negative in the very front. And this would also be an acceptable answer. Oh, because you're making the whole thing a negative with the whole equation. This guy brought it to yeah, the front. It to a right. Copy that. It's like an invisible one now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is totally okay. Once you get the two parentheses, you factored it yeah. and then you're done, okay. technically, right? Okay, I'm going to stop it here because we're now going to get into the trinomials, but the video is already 43 minutes. So let me stop it here and then we'll do the trinomials in the next video.